shit. Is that real carbon fiber? We have 16 gears. 6,000 newton meter of torque. Capristo exhaust truck racing. Well, welcome back, comrade. Good morning, comrades, and welcome back after almost, well, I would say almost two weeks of absence because I took a break to catch up with all the vlogs, and now we should be up to date. What's this? Is this the new X3 or um, could be? Well, they revealed the car. Why is it still running camouflage? Who knows? Whatever. Anyway, like you saw in a quick shot earlier, yes, we are bringing back Boosted Boris. So I am now on my way to the Grand Prix uh, track because I am getting a passenger lap in one of the trucks, which is here to race in the truck Grand Prix. I'm running a bit late. Because right now it is, can you tell us BMW? It's past 12 and uh, my ride is scheduled at 1. 12.21, I need to get my media accreditation, I need to buy sunglasses because I lost the Boosted Boris sunglasses somewhere in one of the cars or whatever it is, so it's quite hectic. So let's get there and get the show on the road. First up, media accreditation. Yeah, don't forget to use the hashtags. I made a mistake of my tires, Ayrton Senna. One of my most favorite quotes. Uh, accreditation done. And now, like I told you earlier, I need to buy Boosted Borders glasses because I lost my. And I get a lot of questions, which type of brand it is, where I can buy them. Well, the answer is simple, Racewear24. And which brand? I have no idea, but we will find out. So I decided to go for this green Evex. Will suit the Sub 7 up as well. And just a reminder, here you can also get some Carmarts t-shirts and, and oh, they still have some boosted bonus caps as well. But anyway, let's get over this to lovely Ava. Hello. Hello. Uh, so I hope it suits me. And if not, then well, I'm in trouble, I guess. But again, since many people ask me what type of glass it is, what type of, um, yeah, so here, UX LGL 21 and so on and so on, and probably here more detailed. But that's enough about fashion. Let's check out the matching color Peterbilt truck. And yeah, although this is not a race truck, it's still damn impressive, especially in this US spec, because for the American audience, you probably know by now that in Europe we don't have those engines in the front, but rather sitting underneath the cabin. So, but yeah, pretty cool to see them. But now let's head out to the GP track and, well, get the passenger ride. Good, arrived at the paddock and I wonder if the trucks even fit in the pit boxes. Oh, it's closed. And actually we can see through there that there are some race cars, in this case uh, SLS GT3 because actually as a matter of fact there are going to be like support races you know uh, to fill up the program so uh, I heard from Getspeed that they'll be racing with their uh, Huracan and I think the Martini Porsche so in the next couple of days I'll show you some race cars as well next to the race trucks but now <sighs> safety before everything <laughs> special and for the full video head out to Boost Boris channel well hopefully there will be a full video because I still need to come up and shoot some content 
Now going to the media briefing, and here are just uh, the calendar of the FIA European Truck Racing Championship. If there is something in your country, it's definitely worth checking out. Wow, Le Mans. Hm. And Zolder, maybe I might visit it because it's not so far away. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. My name is Sam Smith. I'm the uh, press officer and the media delegate for the FIA European Truck Racing Championship. Good, had the briefing, received my media vest. This is a matter of fact number one, so now I feel extra special. In case you're wondering what they tell during the briefing, since I didn't include all the briefing there, mostly the safety regulations where you're not allowed to stay and also some moral codes, uh, meaning that if there's an accident and you don't know the state of the driver, they don't want you suddenly to post the picture on social media, so in case like the driver is getting carried away by the ambulance or even the helicopter and his family is just browsing Facebook or Twitter and then suddenly they see their loved ones, well you get the deal. So that's well, just moral codes. Safety code wise, need to stand two meters behind the guardrail opposed to I believe one meter or even just as close as you want to during casual race, car race. Look at that, look at that. The thing is, uh, you've seen a couple of VLAN videos where I stand pretty close to the barrier, even next to the barrier. This is actually a very stupid thing to do and I admit it and I probably will not be doing that in the future either because, oh here's a truck that I was passenger with. I actually wanted to do a close review of it but unfortunately it's going out. Or maybe not, I think it was uh, another driver but anyway. Uh, I'll be probably standing more far away from the barriers in the nearby future. The reason for that, I actually remembered that uh, last year when I was in Le Mans, they told me that there was a case where a marshal was just like leaning at the barrier and then a car crashed like 20, 30 meters, maybe even 50 meters. Well, no, 50 will be a bit too much, but pretty uh, far away from him. And the shock wave uh, made, well, torn off his hands. Yeah, that's actually pretty hardcore, pretty messed up, but yeah, therefore the reason that they say you shouldn't stand away to, well, you shouldn't, well, you shouldn't, I lost my words and the reason for that is I see a Martini Porsche from GetSpeed, so I'm gonna check out if they are here, well, they are obviously here, if the Lambo is also here and where is everyone and to see what the program is when they need to race. I'm back in the pit lane because as I was looking for some trucks, I uh, saw the Yatspeed team and look, well this one we already seen, but the Huracan, which is most interesting for me, they told me, ah, they just put the cover on the engine, but I guess my average audience already seen the engine of a Huracan quite often enough, they know how it looks like. Uh, just a reminder, it has a modified Capristo exhaust for which they had to take out the whole engine. Probably just joking, but... Uh, uh, when I asked like what's up with the Huracan when it was in service, Tom, the main the mechanic, said Oh, just changing the mufflers and like, oh, okay, you need to take out the whole engine But anyway, they told me that they are going to race tomorrow, the day after tomorrow and the day after tomorrow I mean Friday, Saturday, Sunday, both three days So there'll be plenty of action and now let's check out some trucks again <laughs> Yeah, as if we haven't seen any trucks today Wow, wow, wow what I really like is look at this truck racing. They have obviously special tires for that. And I heard in the past that they run water cooling for the brakes and for the tires. I'm not sure if that's indeed the case, if that's true. So let's see if we can find maybe some team, some engineers. Oh, rubbing is racing. That's nice. Let's see if we can find someone who can tell us more about their amazing truck. Amazing truck. But let's now check out some trucks and I see over there a huge engine maybe let's have a quick look there look at the huge huge turbo it's a bit rusty on average those trucks produce between 1000 and 1500 horsepower and close to 5000 newton meters which is crazy a lot I'm not sure if it was able if you were able to see that on camera when I was having my passenger lap oh you hear even more technical goodies but what I was saying, not sure if it was able, if you were able to see on my passenger ride, but 
that truck was actually drifting and I mean there are also YouTube videos out there where there's like tune trucks are actually drifting so yeah it's pretty spectacular it's my third year at the Nürburgring and I've never been to this event because before I was at Apex and I was uh, at some other company I was always an office monkey and I could never leave office to do like let alone TF let alone such such events but now again let's check out let's see if we can find the truck and do some review on that how many tires do you use per race uh, depends what track uh, for here we will use about six this weekend six uh, yeah okay um, six sets mainly uh, just six six individual tires oh uh, okay uh, they don't really use them in sets we use them more uh, okay like individually in a way okay uh, mostly fronts we use um we put new fronts on yeah. after a couple of sessions they go to the back then we've got new ah uh, okay what's the cost per tire cost per tire these are about 350 to 400 350 each individually that's actually not too much it's not too bad no, no, no. individual thing but when you have six on the truck it becomes a lot too important. yeah still but i mean if you compare it like to casual cars yeah, to which yeah, size yeah. is a lot smaller it can be even more expensive could you maybe tell me more a bit more about the truck because it's actually my first time i ever at such events i read that on average you run between 1000 and 1500 horsepower Yes, yeah, that's true, and about 6,000 uh, new meters. 6,000, 6,000. It's uh, a 6-cylinder, 13-litre yeah. engine. 13-litre, um, 6-cylinder. Nice. Um, so, so this is um, a bonneted American-style cab. Yeah. Most of them are more traditional European Yeah, style. exactly. Um, uh, so obviously you run leaf spring, which is different to com like a conventional like, racing car. Yeah. Um, yeah, leaf spring. Uh, yes, why yeah. is there like extended reservoir for the suspension? Or is uh, it... This is basically like it has, as the spring goes up, it has yes. to um, extend in length. Uh -huh. so you have to have, um, allow the movement basically. Okay. Um, that is a vital part on uh, the tuning and setup okay. of um, the race trucks, really. They have to have a cab off of mm -hmm. normal. Uh, like from a brand, a road truck. And the yeah. chassis rails, these guys have to match come off the standard road truck. Yeah. Um, yeah. So everything else is like, there's quite a lot of strict rules on how shaping of the subframes around them. Okay. Um, such so as control tyres, the same and dry. Yeah. And the wet. Yeah. Um, what I heard in the past is that uh, you also carry additional water to cool down the brakes yes, and yeah, the tyres. Around here we have um, cooling down. Water yeah. jets. Uh, we feed water onto the discs to keep them keep them cool. It's basically to um, keep them in the best operating window yeah. uh, temperature. Yeah. Um, so we have big tanks on them. We use quite a bit of water um, as the main. You often see under braking a lot of steaming off the tyres. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the water they blow off as much as they. Cool. Yeah. They told me that you don't uh, refill during the uh, the race. No. Because, uh, no. We don't really do any pit stops or anything. Being yeah. the fact that it's yeah, it is a road truck in the end of the day. Yeah. Anyway, so it's not the Fast, thing. Um, What's actually like estimate running costs on a year like? Um, running costs are very dependent on the team, really. Yeah, exactly. You look down the lower teams, yeah. a lot less than the bigger teams. Um, engine rentals. Most people here, the fast ones, have engines rented. Yeah. There, um, that's the main main yeah. cost. It can be ends really for everything between the 30, 40, 50 yeah. tires in a year. Yeah, that's yeah. a big cost. So it's tires. European teams. Yeah. After. Please buy them straight away, kind of thing. It's part of the deal they do. Yeah, really cool. Well, I wish you lots of luck. Thanks a lot for this yeah, interesting tour. Much. And uh, yeah, see you around. A oh, very nice fella. That was uh, really informative and interesting. I hope you found that as well. So, actually, running close to 6,000 newton meter of torque, which is just a thousand newton meter more than I first anticipated. And um, I thought that were, they were using water to cool down the brakes, confirmed, but which is quite obvious. And I was surprised that the, like the price of the tires for example only 300 euros for uh, for a racing slick for a truck I mean for a car it can be double depends of course obviously on the size but if you like compare like the prices for a Porsche or even McLaren remember when we did a tire change for the 570s it costed us 1900 euros roughly so that means uh, in total there's like close to 500 euros per tire which is even more for just a road car of course semi slick but yeah yeah interesting lots of news and here is actually something well i would call it definitely special i didn't see the abarth stickers in the first place but i was just like walking past walking past I'm like holy shit is that real carbon fiber 
and well it appears to be real carbon fiber because as a matter of fact it's a Bart and how come a Bart isn't a Bart like more of a Fiat thing well if you're not into trucks like me but I just Wikipedia it Iveco is actually part of Fiat group and part of Fiat group is also well Ferrari for example and well obviously a Bart is a tuner of Fiat so yeah that must be a pretty damn expensive truck carbon fiber cabin carbon fiber doors carbon fiber mirrors I know that trucks can cost quite a lot hundreds and thousands of euros this one is probably even a bit more is there even carbon fiber engine cover can we can we I oh, know we cannot see it but maybe maybe there is maybe there is and just a fun little detail you know that during races they have the pace car safety car and during truck races ta -da, a pace truck I wonder if they also have safety truck. Well, I'm pretty sure they use one of those things or even bigger because if one of the trucks gets stuck in kitty litter in the gravel, then you need something bigger than a casual Bongard truck. And some trucks are getting delivered here and it's actually not much different from uh, having a race car delivered. They're taking off the bumper because otherwise it's too low uh, to get off the tra trailer. If we have a look here inside, they also have um, I guess it's a gearbox, yeah, just an uh, extra gearbox. Oh, make sure not to get run over by a truck. Extra gearbox in case something goes wrong and you need to replace it. And again, rubbing is racing with the trucks. And look at the stance, look at the wheel. Okay, now I had it all. That was a cold start over race truck. Oh, and if you could only smell the unfiltered diesel fumes. This looks even more serious than a race car. Yeah. Uh -huh. Welcome on board. Now you can see we have the front uh, front left brake temperature, front right brake temperature, rear left, rear right. Yeah. That's yeah. so we can monitor the how much water we put onto the disc. Oh, that, yeah, that's that's really cool. And then the, the water is sprayed between the vents here, mm -hmm. and that's what keeps the disc cool. And we yeah. try for each breaking point to go into about 150 degrees. Yeah. Temperature. 150 degrees optimal braking uh, temperature. And then when you run out of water, it goes up to 900 degrees in <laughs> two, two braking points, and then brake normally tracks there, yeah, then across, and then all the way around. So then the caliper holds the disc, but the wheel still turns. Oh. So, that's when your asshole goes. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the rear view camera instead of mirrors, obviously. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For the, for the start as well because the trucks are so high yeah a lot of the time you can't see the the, the red light go uh -huh. so all the mechanics and engineers are on the radio on the radio the, the okay go. wow this is just a steel right yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Everything are you are you allowed to no, run no. like all okay the, uh, cab structure has to stay steel okay all, all this is just plastic yeah so. yeah and the beams need to be yeah, uh you have to have a certain amount of crosses in it and this is just to keep the, the stiffness in the yeah system. Yeah, and then we're sort of we got 100% lock diff in the back. Okay. So basically, a big go kart with suspension. Yeah, so you, yeah, you can actually drift with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, massively. Yeah. Uh, we'll be getting wheel spin in seven gears. In we seven gears, easy, yeah. Easy. And how, how many gears do you run? In total? Uh, we have 16 gears, and we'll be running. We'll be using three gears this circuit. So okay. <laughs> uh, and then from because because we because we it's such a big gearbox. Normally you have low gearbox and then you change to a higher gearbox, that's yeah. why we have a rolling start, so yeah. there's no like miss gears or yeah, anything, yeah, yeah. from 30 mile an hour to 100 mile an hour, where the limit is uh, by FIA law, mm -hmm. uh, it's about 3.4 seconds, mm -hmm. so it, goes, it definitely goes well. Yeah, it goes pretty keep, quick. Uh, keep a few uh, Porsches behind it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're yeah. running 3.4 3 bar a boost, uh, standard pump diesel, and we carry 200 litres of water. For one race distance, and the water sprayed on the brakes and onto the intercooler, 
Mm -hmm. and we burn 60 litres of diesel in 25 minutes. Wow, that's quite some. Yeah. What's the race distance? Uh, race distance is normally around 25 minutes, so we'll be doing, I would think, 13, uh, 13 laps, something like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, somewhere yeah. Somewhere around that distance. So yeah, so like 150 ish kilometers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wish you lots of luck. Thank you again for this informative yeah. tour. Huh. Oh no, <laughs> that's the truck that I was passenger in. And hereby the question answered how they recover those brake trucks with a big truck, with a pretty big truck. Ouch. I wonder what happened to it. I hope nothing serious. Oh well, mechanics are laughing, so I presume nothing bad. <laughs> so apparently it just ran out of diesel, that's the reason why it stalled and they needed the recovery truck. That's good news, that's good news. Stop it! Makes me happy. <laughs> 24 and a half hours a day, they're ready for you. Well, the recovery truck is going away. The race truck with which I was a passenger earlier today is back in the pits. They only ran out of diesel, so luckily nothing major. They'll be ready for tomorrow's race. And I guess we can end this vlog on this positive note. I hope you guys enjoyed. We finally caught up and I definitely have enjoyed my first time truck Grand Prix, my first time, well, truck Grand Prix, the Nürburgring, first time in the racetrack ever. It was pretty damn amazing. I hope you thought so as well. So yeah, as always, subscribe, like, share, and as always, food shot and in tomorrow's vlog. Bye-bye. Hey, well, of course, it's very impressive that there is a big engine in such a lightweight car, but, but what's up with this?